Okay, it looks like we have most registered attendees here, so we're going to kick off the Keyword Research for Classified Sites webinar, which is presented today by ICMA solution provider Martin Heyman from Site Visibility. We'd like to welcome all of you who are joining us from around the world. I think we have about eight countries represented today. So good morning and good afternoon and good evening, depending on where you're all logging in. Uh, today's presentation is going to be estimated at 45 to 50 minutes, leaving about 10 to 15 minutes for questions and answers at the end of the session. But before we begin, we would like to go through a few housekeeping notes. Uh, the first one, in the upper right-hand corner of your screen, you'll notice a little red or orange arrow. Please click on that to get to your GoToWebinar menu bar. Uh, from here, you'll be able to control your screen size and ask questions. Um, during the presentation or the webinar, uh, the presenter, Martin, will be, the, will be the only one who is not muted, so everyone else will be in order to prevent background noise. Uh, therefore, we ask for you to write any of your questions you have directly into the chat box, which is in your menu bar on the right. Uh, you may also ask questions throughout the presentation through this box, and they'll be answered during our Q&A session uh, for you to benefit at the end of the webinar. If you're experiencing any technical difficulties, uh, let us know through this same chat box and I'll follow up with you directly. And we have noticed uh, from prior experience uh, that audio quality is affected by the number of internet pages you have open. So please close as many um, of them as you can. And we are also going to be recording this webinar so you can have access to it on our website within the next coming days. I'll send you an email when it's loaded and ready to be accessed, but please note that you will need to be logged into our site to access the recording. And I think we that covers everything. So Martin, I'm going to hand over the presentation role to you. And I think we're ready to go. Okay. Hello everyone. Um, so. I've just shared my screen, hopefully everyone can see that now. Um, so I did a, a webinar for ICMA back in September, um, and that was around challenges faced by classified sites. Um, and that was a presentation uh, around uh, challenges based when it comes to things like uh, keywords to choose, um, on-site elements of optimization, uh, and also things like uh, Google updates, like uh, Panda and Penguin, um, and some of the feedback after that presentation was that people would love to have more of a practical uh, kind of how-to uh, webinar session. So rather than showing a presentation this time, I wanted to do something that was uh, a bit more hands-on and uh, just give give some examples of, of tools that can be used and and good ways to go about finding a good solid uh, keyword research list to use in your own campaigns. Um, so I wanted to start with a, a, a few ideas for how we go about putting our keyword list together. How do we research the keywords that we want to target? Um, so I've got the, the Google's keyword tool on the screen here, which uh, a lot of you may have seen. Uh, but before I go into this, I just wanted to touch on a couple of other things. The first one being um, Google Analytics. So um, some people may be using other uh, analytics tools, but I know um, Google Analytics is uh, probably the most popular. So uh, whether you're using Google Analytics or another tool, uh, it's always a great starting point just to see what's driving you traffic already. Uh, so if you can look at your, your organic search and your keyword list uh, within analytics, have a look at you know, what your top keywords are, um, what keywords are already driving you traffic, because obviously you don't, when you're, you're changing on-site elements or, or looking at a link, link building campaign, you don't want to miss out on the opportunities that are already there, especially the quick wins. Um, so yeah, have a look at what you're ranking for um, or what's driving you traffic already. Maybe even check the rankings of those as well. Um, what you quite often find is if uh, if you've got terms driving you traffic and um, and you look, check the rankings and they're maybe low down on page one or especially if they're kind of page two or three, 
um, it's, it's kind of an indicator that's that's a, a really good opportunity for a quick quick win you know look at driving that just up a little bit more uh, just to give you that that extra bit of traffic um, aside for uh, moving on from analytics um, something people uh, kind of miss out on sometimes uh, I don't know if miss out is, is the right word but you know don't do as much as they should is what they tend to do is just dive straight into the tools you know uh, they may may think about one specific keyword, dive into the tools, and expect those to do the rest. Um, and I don't think people use their own head enough. Um, so you know, think about how you would search, coming up with your own ideas and own variations. Um, and even if it's just variations of the the same same keyword, um, really try to, as a starting point, almost you know, throw down all your own ideas because that's where using these tools. Will will come into real use is off the back of you know a variation of your own ideas rather than just one or two. Um, so looking at the keyword tool, uh, what I wanted to do was kind of give a, a live example um, of a bit of keyword research. Uh, and I've, I've worked on a variety of classified sites before, and I just kind of plucked a term out of the air, and one of them was a pet site. So I just I just uh, looked at dogs for sale, and if we do a quick search on that, there we go. And what we get is um, your competition. Um, a, a lot of you um, may have used this before, so I'll just run through all this quite briefly, because um, you may know this tool quite well anyway. Um, but what, what we have here is competition. Bear in mind, though, I always uh, tell people to take this with a pinch of salt, because bear in mind that this is um, Google's AdWords keyword research tool. So this is based on paid competition. So although it can be a good indicator for organic results as well, um, you know, if it says high competition in there, it may be high for, for paid search, but it's not necessarily high for organic and vice versa. So, um, you know, don't always take this as gospel. Uh, and then we have the global um, worldwide searches per month and local. So the, these are the UK ones just here. Um, but what we have here is this set to broad. And some people um, often make the mistake of leaving this like this. Um, and what I say to people is, well, pretty much ignore this. Um, you can get very, very skewed results when you leave your searches on broad. Um, you'll notice if we, in fact, let's put both in just so you can see. Let's pop exact in there. Hey, Martin. And one, you'll notice there's, hello? Yeah, one thing. Yeah. Uh, I don't know about anybody else, but the screen sharing is a bit delayed, just an FYI. Is it? Okay. Yeah, just a few seconds. Okay, no problem. Thank you. Okay, so. Yet yeah, what we have here is um, dogs for sale exact searches against um, the same but broad, and you'll notice in the uh, under local or global and local, there's there's quite a big difference there. Um, so just looking at broad, which doesn't look at people searching exactly for dogs for sale, it it takes in those words but gives you a broad range of searches around that. Um, so if I give you another example of, uh, I was doing some work a long time ago for a, a, a boating equipment website, and I did a little search on boat DVD, and I'll just wait for these results to come up. Hopefully you'll see that not after me as well. Okay, hopefully you can see that now, and uh, you'll, you'll see there's, under local monthly searches, there's uh, 1,300 there, which, you know, it's, it's a bit, it's worth looking at, and uh, that's for broad, and when I first saw this, I thought, oh, great, you know, that, that's worth, worth optimizing that page for, um, but then I realized it was on broad, and I thought, actually, I'd better check the exact, and 
you know, it's terms like this when you kind of really see how skewed it is, because then you realise actually people searching for boat DVD, that exact phrase, there's no one, or next next to nothing. So, um, and then that got me thinking about all the, the films with the word boat in and things like that, and actually it's going to be really skewed. Um, so always try and avoid broad search, and always just look at the exact one. So. Um, I, I always tell people. Do, some people, some you know, look at both. I, I just, it's. Uh, I think it's kind of general in the the SEO industry now to to just look at exact search, just to keep your results more accurate, so you're not uh, being led down, led down the wrong path. Um, so if we can just pop dogs for sale back in here. Right, um, okay, hopefully you should see that in a moment. Um, a couple of other uh, just small tips here. So underneath where your um, monthly searches are shown, uh, you'll notice you have um, some, some further expandable areas which actually give you more suggest suggestions. So if we look at uh, drop down small dog, Unfortunately, it's not going the quickest today, but uh, that should expand in a moment. And what, what this does is it looks at um, the search terms you've thrown in at the top, and it gives you variations of those that, uh, that may be relevant and searched for. So you see here um, something you may not have thought of, small dogs for sale, small dogs for sale in the UK. Um, um, and certain areas as well. So there's, there's a, a variation here, and also you can see how much search these have. So you might want to filter out the ones uh, like these that you know in the middle here and at the bottom, which don't really get much search. But small dogs for sale, you know, it's, it's, that's worth worth looking at. Definitely worth looking at. Um, so you get these um, suggestions below the searches you put at the top. Um, but somewhere um, somewhere people go wrong sometimes is I think you can put around 50 terms at a time in this word or phrase box at the top. And what people often do is when they're doing their keyword research and they gather together um, a load of keyword ideas, it'll sort of just throw as many as possible in here. Now the problem with that is you're really limited on the suggestions Google gives you then. Um, so you know you're lucky. You'd be lucky if it gives you one per per term of those. You may miss out on a lot. Um, it may just look at the, the top ones you put in. Um, you're not going to get a good variation because you you've crammed so much in there. So what I tend to say to people is um, rather than throwing up, you know, filling it with uh, 50 or or 100, um, just look at you know kind of 10 to 20 maybe um, terms in there maximum. Maybe, maybe even if you've got the time, just to to throw in, um, you know, a handful at a time. Maybe even just just five at a time, because by doing that, the suggestions you get down here, um, you're going to get a much better range based on all of those keywords, rather than it being limited because of the amount of keywords you've thrown in there. Uh, so it's it's quite a good tip just to really expand your keyword ideas and and look at. Uh, suggestions that Google are throwing you that maybe you wouldn't have thought of. Um, so something else I'd, I'd like to advise is um, obviously I mentioned the competition for this one it's saying hi, um, but obviously that is based on paid. Some like I said sometimes it's a good indicator so it may actually be high competition. Um, what I tend to advise is actually go and have a look. Um, you know, have a have a little nose at what is ranking on that page. So if we if we have a little look here, and I'm not in an uh, incognito window, so it may come up with kind of local results as well, like Brighton, which is where I'm at at the moment. Um, but you can have a little scan down, and you can see, you know, there's there's a few big players in there, and uh, RSPCA there. Um, and you can get an idea of is who is on that page. Um, you know, am I am I likely to rank on that page, or actually is it full of really high authority competition? 
um, and also are they optimizing for that term um, which a lot of these seem to be if I look at something like small dogs for sale you'll see there's some quite big sites on there but actually none of them are directly optimizing for small dogs for sale so there's possibly an opportunity there especially as there's some search around it um, but you may find the competition for um, paid um, within the AdWords keyword tool is high um, because there's actually quite a lot of people going after to paid terms here so just something to think about have, really have a look at what's ranking already I'll just show you one other example actually which uh, uh, something someone pointed out to me recently um, this page a while back had um, just some general uh, clothing sites on there uh, but then a lot of those sites suddenly dropped off of page one since I think the Google updates in January which is, which uh, seem to help bigger brands quite a lot actually and if you look at the first page now it's Amazon, ASOS, um, eBay, Marks and Spencer you know there's some really big brands on there so actually the chance of those sites getting back up to that first page is is quite minimal now uh, so what they should really be doing is not just looking at this term looking at maybe some some longer tail terms around that and driving traffic to those rather than trying to fight a, a, you know what could be a losing battle um, against these guys and trying to get back up to page one for this term so um, so at the moment we've only got dogs for sale in here but obviously once we've um, maybe come up with some ideas ourselves maybe looked at um, what we're what's already driving traffic within analytics you know we, we've got a good base there of a few keywords we can then use a, use a few tools to expand on those ideas the idea being we can then th throw the ideas into this keyword tool maybe 5 10 20 at a time filter out the rubbish so see what's actually what are people searching for if you know if you, you want to rank for something but no one's searching for it is it really worth ranking for so um, so using this tool is about kind of throwing in all the keyword ideas and that can be as many as you want and just filtering it down so getting rid of the rubbish um, even getting rid of the irrelevant stuff so a lot of people will often look at something and think oh that, that gets a lot of search but actually it's not really relevant to their pages and yeah if they rank for it it might drive traffic to their site but then it's, that traffic's a bit pointless if those people then don't do what you need them to do whether that's placing an ad or or actually using using your site to, uh, to kind of look for what they need um, so we want to be dri driving relevant uh, traffic to the site as well um, so so yeah we want to get a handful of, or, or a big bulk of ideas to throw into here so we can filter out and uh, I've got just a few tools that we can use to do that uh, so I thought I'd start with this one and this is one that quite a few people avoid because they think uh, yeah but I'm not optimizing for videos uh, yeah that may be the case and when it comes to the numbers in here yeah you might want to ignore them because uh, obviously it's you're not thinking about kind of YouTube searches uh, but for example if we put dogs for sale in here and remember this is all about exactly what this button says get keyword ideas so it's all about finding more ideas that you can you can maybe uh, you know, maybe that you haven't thought of might be relevant to your site might be able to drive more traffic to your site uh, and whether that's done through through a you know, kind of separate campaign or just optimizing specific pages or whether it's for blog content you know you can get some great ideas from tools like this so like I said ignore these figures down here um, we we want to ideally we want to put any good keywords in here back into the AdWords keyword tool uh, rather than looking at video data um, so you know again it's great for picking up some ideas that you maybe hadn't thought of maybe pit bulldogs um, there's some relevant ones in here like dirt bikes I don't know how quite how that's related to uh, dogs for sale uh, but if you have a little scan down here um, you'll see you can pick out some some potential um, you know potentially high search for 
terms. So we've got these add buttons on the right hand side. So if I just pop a couple in, uh, let's look at that one and baby pit bull dogs. And what you'll see is over on the right hand side here, um, it lists the keywords that you then pop in. And then you can download these to, uh, to CSV is probably the best option. Uh, you can then take those from the Excel sheet, pop them into the keyword tool, and again, filter out the rubbish. And you know, you're then left with, uh, with some potentially strong keywords that you can go after. And how people gather that data, it often varies, and you know, it's up to you. Um, hopefully you can see this Excel sheet I'm just opening now. Um, you know, down here I've got some tabs. You may just want to split it into categories. Um, you may actually want a whole Excel document just for one category and split it into subcategories and go really detailed. Um, you know, it's really up to you how you go about that. Some people don't do enough keyword research, and they, you know, I've seen people who literally just do keyword research for their homepage, and that's kind of it, which is no good whatsoever, really. Um, but then there's people who really go in maybe too in depth sometimes you end up with thousands and thousands of keywords so you know be realistic with um, with how much you can deal with and what you want to optimize and um, and also what you want to track as well so whatever keyword tracking uh, ranking tracking tool you're using so um, I don't know maybe uh, link decks or my SEO tool is quite a, a cheap one um, tools like that you know that you can just throw keywords into and, and check the rankings uh, whatever you're using, uh, just bear in mind that this keyword research, sometimes it may be variations of terms that you're optimizing for, so you don't directly want to optimize for those terms within your pages, but it's kind of broad and around what you're optimizing for, so you may want to just check the rankings, because Google is getting so much smarter at realizing that uh, people searching for um, dogs for sale may also be looking for, for puppies for sale, for example. So you may even rank for puppies for sale on a dogs for sale site, um, even if you haven't got puppies for sale on there. Just just an example. So um, so it's good to maybe track the rankings of a little bit more than you're necessarily optimizing for. Um, let's just jump on to Ubersuggest, which is a great little tool. Um, I think I think Uber suggests uh, describe this as Google Suggest on steroids, uh, which is quite a good way of putting it. So it uses Google Suggest. So um, when you start typing into Google, you you kind of uh, get suggestions of um, things people are searching for, uh, and that uses this. So I'll, I'll just use our example again. Uh, I've got that set to UK, and let's just pop this in here. I hate these things. <laughs> Okay, and hit suggest. And that's just thinking about it, and that's loading up now, so you should see that in a moment. And if I scroll down a little bit, you then, based on the Google suggest, you then get a, a, another handful of keyword ideas uh, based on what people are searching for, really, the, the way that um, Google suggest works. So. You'll see that some of them are, are maybe irrelevant to your area, uh, but we've got uh, Dogs for Sale UK here. We've got some locations like Scotland and in Kent. Uh, if we go a bit further down, um, you'll see that it then starts going Dogs for Sale space A and B and C. So to see what Google suggests would then bring up. So you notice for this particular term, um, a lot of them will bring up locations because it's the way people search. A lot of people will search dogs for sale location. Um, so it's worth throwing a few different terms relevant to your sites in here and just seeing what it brings up. And again, it's just great for ideas. So you may just want to throw a few of these in. So I'll give you an example. Let's, uh, if we hit plus on dogs for sale UK and uh, Scotland and Kent, uh, it's just a few there, for example, and over on the right-hand side here, uh, again, as with the uh, YouTube one, we get a list of what we wanted to add. We can then click this button here, Get, 
and we then get this page. So we can just copy and paste these straight into our um, either our Excel sheet or just straight into the uh, Google keyword tool. And again, filter out the rubbish, maybe keep hold of the, uh, the terms that there's potential for. Um, so have a play with that. It's a great tool, we would suggest. Um, and let's just have a look at merge words now. Don't know if any of you have come across this, but I think especially for classified sites, this is an awesome tool. Um, especially when you're kind of optimizing for, for such a variety of, of, ter of terms and combination of terms, uh, particularly with things like locations. So just an example here, I may go uh, dogs for sale. Uh, puppies for sale and let's let's say we've got cats on there as well cats for sale and then over here uh, I could maybe say in London in Newcastle um, and in Liverpool and what I may also want to do, bear in mind that when we use the keyword tool, we're using exact match. I may also want to just search these again, but without the in. So what this will do is it will put all these combinations together and look at people searching for dogs for sale in London, in Newcastle and Liverpool, as well as dogs for sale London, Newcastle Liverpool, and then the same for puppies and the same for cats. So rather than having to type these all out or play about with Excel um, shortcuts and formulas, you can literally hit merge there and you get your full list below. So all the variations there. And again, you have the ability to copy and paste straight into the keyword tool. Or if you've got a huge number here, and obviously you don't want to go straight into the keyword tool, you just want to do 5, 10, 20 at a time, uh, you can throw them into Excel or just grab them from here, 5 at a time throw them into the keyword tool and again you can filter out the rubbish and maybe look at you know are people searching for dogs for sale in London or just dogs for sale London for example um, so this is really handy especially for, uh, for, for classifieds where you're looking at so many combinations of, of keywords and categories and subcategories and so on okay let's have a quick look at Google Correlate um, this, uh, this isn't the, the best tool to use, uh, but I wanted to throw it in there just because um, it's quite good just for finding extra ideas. So, like I said earlier, Google is getting so much better at, um, at kind of associating words and phrases and realizing um, what's connected. Uh, so, let's have a look at our term again. And what this does is it just comes up with suggestion based, suggestions based on that against uh, kind of real life trends, really. Uh, so let me just show more, get a few here. So some of them you'll see are completely irrelevant, um, like TV stands. Where that came from, I don't know. Uh, but pups for sale, something you ne wouldn't necessarily think of if you've just been optimizing for puppies for sale. You may not have even mentioned terms like this. Um, so it just, just gives you an idea of a few extra things that, you know, does anyone search for that? Let's go and have a look in the keyword tool. Puppy adoption, is it worth doing, doing a blog post on that? Or even, even a campaign or a page on that? Let's throw it into the keyword tool. Um, you know, so you can just get some extra ideas. This isn't one of the sort of tools where you're going to get hundreds of ideas from, but it's great just to kind of top up uh, what you, you're already working on. And here we have a tool called Solve, uh, which is similar to Uber Suggest in a way. Um, and what it does is uh, it, it again kind of uh, pulls data from, from um, Google Suggest, but also uh, sites like Wikipedia and Amazon and so on as well. So again it's just uh, and that's why I, why I kept these two to last really again it's just good for topping up those ideas um, so you know we can have a scan down here dogs for sale 2013 I don't know if I can't imagine anyone searching for that but they may be and you know 
again, it's good to just grab some of these dogs for free, dogs for adoption, grab some of these keywords into our sheet or straight into the keyword tool. And again, we've got another bulk of keywords there. And like I was saying earlier, um, rather than just basing all your research like this on one term like dogs for sale, um, you know, really throw in a variety because it's the only way you're going to get such a huge broad range of, of keyword research and ideas is if you kind of vary vary this. So, you know, dog sales, um, we get some more ideas, ideas there. Uh, cheap dogs for sale. Uh, it's often quite good to use uh, qualifiers, I think they're known as. Um, so things like cheap and best and most popular, uh, things like that. Um, is you know some people often miss out on those so so maybe again what we've done so far you know do all that with cheap and best and most popular and, and terms like that um, and, and see what that brings up you know and when you start delving in deeper like that uh, and looking at maybe intent terms such as uh, buy or shop or find um, you know, and that all of a sudden, when you plug those into these tools, you've got a huge, huge number of keywords you can throw into the keyword tool, and you've really got a decent amount there. You can then filter and um, filter out the rubbish from, and, and be left with a really good, strong base of keywords. Um, so yeah, they're the um, they're the kind of the, the better tools, I think, to use for for keyword ideas. Um, but it's really all kind of comes back to to using this keyword tool. Um, so just uh, just a little reminder on a few bits on here. Um, first one was obviously don't make make sure you don't throw too many terms into this word or phrase box uh, because it's great to get some ideas from Google as well further down this page. And I think if you look down here, you know when when this gives you some ideas you can uh, you can expand that and you can tick the ones you want to have a look at and then you can download these so you know if Excel is your friend so really make use of Excel um, whether you're using multiple uh, tabs or however you want to do it um, what I tend to have is is kind of um, you know a final Excel document which is where I'm, where I'm kind of putting all my 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 good terms into and then a research document where I'm you know, pumping everything into all these ideas I download from Excel, normally end up with quite a lot of sheets open, um, paste them all into this one research um, Excel document I'm, I'm working on, uh, and, you know, use that as, uh, as kind of an ideas hole, you know, throw everything in there, and then pump it all back into this tool. So, you know, ideas from, from the Google Keyword tool down here, um, ideas from Uber suggest on a variety of keyword uh, terms that are really relevant to a particular category or or um, you know, maybe even the, the main terms you're going after um, especially with classified sites you can really kind of get deep into this so obviously you might want to not want to do your entire keyword research at a time you might want to focus on certain categories at a time um, but once you start delving into you know Uber suggests with a variety of those merge words with variations, uh, and then just a few extra ideas from from kind of correlate and solve. Uh, you can you can really end up with a huge amount, um, but because you've got such a large amount that you can then filter down using this tool, uh, you, you can end up with a great base of keywords that you can either optimize your on-site for, uh, build your your link building um, campaign around. Um, or just because they're variations of terms you're going after, just track, see where you're ranking for them. You know, some of those stronger ones that you thought maybe you couldn't rank for, but suddenly you start ranking on page two, might be worth taking another look at that, thinking, you know what, that's a quick win, let's just give that an extra little bump. Um, so, yeah, so hopefully those, um, those tools have been handy. I think we finished a little bit early. Um, I wrote a blog post. Uh, for the ICMA blog, um, just to to link to these tools and kind of just highlight their key points and and just uh, list some some you know key tips and pointers um, as far as keyword research goes. Uh, so I think Heather is going to mention that to you in a moment.
Um, but if you if we want to dive into any questions, I'd be happy to try and help and uh, answer anything if if Heather wants to, uh, to take yes. the stage. Yep. Thank you, Martin. That was fantastic. You really gave them some good resources. Um, we do have um, some extra time here, so feel free to ask any questions that you may have thought of during the webinar and just put them in the chat box here. And we do have a couple that came through already. Let me get those out here. Um, we do have one that asks, when you say local, um, and for your case, Martin, does that mean the UK? Does it just mean London, Europe? What, what's the definition of local? It's normally based on um, the area you're searching for. So if I, uh, can you still see my screen okay? Uh, yes. We okay. still see puppies okay. for sale. Uh, yes, okay. okay. So if you look here, I've got um, advanced options and filters, and then locations UK. Um, so my, my local column is based on UK. Um, so it's normally, it's normally based on the country. Uh, the country you're working on. Some, sometimes what you'll find is uh, just a little pointer because I've seen people fall over with this, spend hours doing keyword research and then realize they're not logged in and this has been set to US all the time. So by default this normally sets to US and uh, some people have, have delved in, started doing keyword research, spent hours doing it and then realized that actually all of the local monthly oh, no. search data they've got is based on US. So either make sure you're logged in so that all this data is right, or if you're not logged in, just make sure you go to advanced options and filters and set this to the country relevant to you. Good tip. <laughs> you don't want to waste anybody's time. <laughs> um, okay. Um, we also have one that says not everybody knows about the um, term of or definition of local, but they're also wondering... Um, how do you then apply the keywords to that local region? Okay, so um, so it depends on it depends on your site setup and what filters you have. So um, so people should always have um, kind of clean, indexable uh, location pages for their relevant categories and subcategories. So, for example, if we're working on a pet site. Um, and we're, we're uh, you know, it's a classified site that's selling cats, dogs, uh, puppies, birds, and so on. Um, when people are, um, or, or browse into that dogs for sale page, um, they'd normally have, depending on how your site's set up, they normally have some filters for location. Um, if they haven't, then you really should, because it's an opportunity that you're missing if you're not, if you haven't got pages for locations. So, um, you know, if you look at um, if you look at the if you see some sites with locations down there, just have a look at how they work. And if you're on a dogs for sale page and then you click on London, for example, you'll probably find the URL changes to something like uh, dogs for sale slash London, or sometimes even the other way around. Uh, and then the page may be optimized with a header one tag of dogs for sale in London, uh, a title meta title tag of dogs for sale in London perhaps with your brand after it. Um, so, you know, everyone should really have location pages per category and subcategory uh, so that you can have a static page uh, and URL that people can then search for and find in, in the SERPs. So if someone then go searches, oh, I want to find dogs for sale in London, um, you know, the idea is if you've got that page well enough optimized um, and it's, you know, it's well structured in your site, then people will find that in the search results um, and go straight to that relevant page. Um, so it's about making sure you've got, um, got location pages or, or locations as part of your categories and subcategories uh, that you can, you can optimize. So, so a lot of it's about on-site, really. Okay. Um, Jim, uh, does that answer your question? If so, just uh, write in the chat box if it did or not. Um, we also then, excuse me, have another question uh, regarding local search again. Um, has there been a drop-off in local search terms um, or postcodes due to location-sensitive devices like iPhones? That's a good question. Um, the, 
This yeah, is a great question, and the stats I'm not 100% sure on, um, but I think the general consensus is yes, it is affecting it a little, little bit. Um, so quite often when people are, um, like when we're doing campaigns and, and people are, uh, want, uh, clients want to set KPIs um, around just rankings, um, especially if their campaigns are quite location heavy, it's often a really flawed metric. Um, so it's just something to be aware of because, uh, yeah, you know, people being logged in or using devices, it does really affect what, what's showing up now. Um, but, you know, obviously, if, as long as you're optimizing in the right way, the chances are still quite good as long as you've done everything else right, you can still rank for those terms. But just be aware that, um, you know, if you search for something where you are, it's not necessarily what someone's seeing somewhere else. Um, but yeah, it's, you know, it doesn't mean the opportunity is not there and there's no point in going for it because you're not based somewhere, you're based somewhere else. Um, so it's, it's about getting the optimi optimization right. And, um, uh, but yeah, it probably does, it does, um, you know, it has been, there have been some big changes related to things like that. Interesting question. Um, okay, we have another one from Rena. And she's wondering if you could provide any suggestions for keywords that are ideas for a, just a general classified site. And so instead of just focusing on puppies or jobs or real estate, do you have any ideas for just generalized keywords? Um, yeah, if it's, um, if it's general, well, if it's a general classified site, it should still have categories. Um, so, I, you know, I'm not sure what this particular site is like, but you know, for even if it's for search purposes, in fact, it should be for the user as well. So, if someone comes to a general site, um, you know, obviously they they want routes and a good structure to find what they need. So, that there's going to be um, there should be some some good strong categories there that people can then browse through and and that know what they're looking for. So, as long as those categories are there, um, whether it's whether it's jobs or pets or whatever it may be. Um, then, then yeah, it's about. I think I think what people worry about sometimes is they think, oh, well, my site's quite general. What do I optimize my homepage for? Mm. Um, and sometimes it's worth just saying, do you know what? Forget about my homepage. It would be great to rank for the word classifieds or classified sites. Um, but actually, you know, a I'm probably not going to. And B, am I actually going to get much benefit from that? Or is all the benefit, or most of the benefit, going to be from all, my, all of my categories, which I can optimize for certain terms that people are searching for, and all of the subcategories and products within them, where I'm going to get a lot of long tail search from. Um, so, yeah, if it's a general site, I'd maybe not to worry too much about you know, doing tons of keyword research on how to optimize your general site and your home page. I'd maybe concentrate on on the categories themselves and really make sure that the optimization is spot on for those. Mm, good point. So it's all really just about narrowing your scope, really. Yeah. 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 Okay. Good question, Rena. Um, we do have one last question. If anybody else has any more, uh, please feel free to write it down in the chat. Um, but the next one, a couple people are wondering. If the sites that you have shown, such as Uber suggests in Merge Words, if they're free or do they need to be paid upon access? Uh, no, they're they're all free. Perfect. Um, yes, they're all free. So w when I've mentioned um, a few uh, rank tracking tools, I think I mentioned LinkDex and My SEO tool were a couple of mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, but there's everyone out there's pro probably uh, doing some sort of rank checking. So. Uh, you, you'll, you'll realize there's a ton out there. Uh, those ones are paid, uh, but there are some free ones as well. What I will say with rank checking is if you use some of the free ones, they're not generally very good. Sometimes the results are really flawed. Um, mm -hmm. But all of these tools, uh, and then there's more as well. You know, It's worth uh, signing up for, for some of the kind of SEO blogs and things like that, and just keeping an eye on new tools that emerge, because uh, there's, some, there's some great uh, keyword research tools out there, but these are just some of, some of my favorites that I find really useful for, for gathering ideas. Right, and so is, is it LinkDex, like L-I-N-K-D-E-X? 
That's right, yeah. Okay. I have listed those, Link Dex and my SEO tool, um, yeah. in the chat box. And those are both paid for, right? Paid uh, sites. Are, yeah. yeah, okay. And you were gonna say something else, Martin. Yeah, there was um there was one other thing I just wanted to throw in actually. Mm -hmm. Um obviously we we've been looking at kind of keyword research for, for you know the, the main site and the categories and subcategories and so on. Um, but what people often neglect is their blog. Uh, so, you know, often a, a blog, uh, I've seen some great blogs out there as part of a, just a back end really, to, you know, just a side side show to a, a, you know, a great site. And actually you find you know, sometimes if the blog's done well enough, it can really drive some great traffic to your site. Um, but often, so sometimes people get a bit spammy with their blog and just concentrate on keywords and just, you know, oh, let's do an article on, uh, let's talk about dogs for sale. And then next, uh, you know, next, the next day, let's do another article about dogs for sale. And they just get, you know, it gets a bit spam heavy rather than actually creating content that people want to see. And bear in mind that the blog could be, um, look at, you know, bring in some great long tail search and be, um, be an avenue to a broader audience um, of people that may come to your site. You know, they may not be looking for a classified site of, of any sort or any of your categories, but you know, there's a good chance that some of them will as well. And it's also, you know, good brand awareness. So it's good to kind of build up your blog as well for, for long tail traffic and so on. Um, keyword research is sometimes a little bit different about that because you don't want to be too keyword heavy and go, you know, start seeming a bit spammy and, and creating your content just for the search engines. Um, so um, if I just pop into, there's some um, Q&A sites like Quora and uh, Yahoo Answers, um, which are, are great for, for this sort of thing. So if we pop into Yahoo Answers, um, I don't know if Dogs for Sale is going to be a great example, but we'll throw it in there anyway. Um, let's have a look. Okay, so so what you can look at here, you can actually run a search. Uh, where is it? Is it discover? Okay, uh, I'm not sure if it's in here. Let me just have a look. But what you can do is you can you can actually run searches in these and uh, just see what people are asking. So if I pop in a, uh, oh, it's asking me to log in. Okay, I'm not going to be able to show you that, but what you can do is you can, um, yeah, you can search something like um, I don't, puppies or or dogs or dogs for sale if you want to go a bit more specific. Um, you know, just pop a variety of uh, just just some terms related to your site in there, and what you'll find is a lot of people asking particular questions, and that may be uh, related to you know what's the best way to go about breeding dogs or buying dogs or something or other and um, it's just great for blog content ideas because what you can actually do is write a blog post on that, answer that question within the blog post so you all, already know you've got content that people, you know, some people are looking for uh, and then you can even go back to Quora or Yahoo Answers and you can answer that question and link back to your site from there. Um, so yeah, just thinking about kind of blog content as well rather than just keyword research for your main site. Um, just make sure it's you know useful for the user rather than thinking too much about what keywords do I want to rank for. Um, that's 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 a great way of finding content ideas for blogs. Yeah, that's an excellent idea. Um, thank you, Martin. Uh, do we have any other questions? In the meantime, though, the blog that Martin did write up, it's on our website, and um, he has listed all the tools that he went through today, as well as their um, URLs for easy access, and just some tips about what their, each tool is used for. I don't see any other questions. Should we just give another minute for people to uh, think about what they learned today, and then... And Heather, if, um, mm -hmm. if anyone does have any further questions, I know one or two from the last webinar did email me just asking a couple of questions. Um, I'm happy to, to um, 
to try and help out where I can. So if anyone's got any quick questions, they just want to pop me an email. Um, I'm happy for Heather just to to um, share my email as well. Great. I'll do that in a follow-up email uh, tomorrow, or not tomorrow, Monday. Okay, I think um, I think everybody's satisfied. I guess they learned everything they can. I hope so. Uh, thank you, Martin. Um, so that concludes our webinar, and I hope everyone is able to walk away with some new tools for their tool belts. And um, we'd like to extend just a, a huge thank you to Martin for putting this webinar presentation together. You did a wonderful job. And as I mentioned before, we have recorded the webinar and it will be uploaded to our uh, website, but you will need to log in to access the recording. And ICMA is also hosting another webinar next month, uh, the 11th of July, um, and we'll be discussing how a Shipstead site increased their user engagement rates by 30%. So um, everyone's welcome to join that webinar. Registration will be opening within a couple of weeks, and we'll send out a newsletter, but stay tuned to our website as well. And lastly, we would appreciate if each of you could take a minute to fill out the survey um, that you'll receive upon logging out of the webinar. And thank you all again for joining in, and have a great Thursday.